Very good evening and welcome to NTA Nationwide. I am Ifoma Ojinta. The news in a moment. We begin with the latest number of confirmed cases of coronavirus announced by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, which stands at 193. As at 14th May 2020, the breakdown across the country is 58 in Lagos, Kano 44, Jigawa 35, Yobe 12, the FCT 9, and Ogun 7. Others include Plateau and Gombe, five each, Imo, four, Edo, three, Kwara and Bruno, three each. Bauchi, Nasarawa and Ondo have one case each. No new state has reported a case since last night. A total of 5,162 cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in Nigeria. 1,180 patients have been discharged and death stands at 167. The Task Force on COVID-19, in collaboration with the government of Kano State, is putting together a one-day training program for working journalists on prevention and safety protocols as frontline workers in the fight against the dreaded coronavirus. A statement by the Kano State Commissioner for Information, Mohamed Garba, said 100 journalists working for the print and broadcast media at the state and national level are expected to participate at the training scheduled to hold on Saturday at the Government House Kanu. He said the training session was informed by the need to ensure that journalists who are the mirror of every nation and engine of growth play safe as they are as they, are discharge, as they discharge their professional responsibility to keep the public informed on the pandemic. Papers to be presented include Risk Communication by Dr. Sani Guazo, Safe Media versus COVID-19 by Dr. Ovoraye John, What is COVID-19 by Dr. Iraoya, Infection Prevention and Control by Martha Okonufwa. A combined team of the Nigeria Immigration Service and the Nigerian Navy operatives has intercepted 10 Nigerians who were heading to Cameroon amidst the border closure to curb the spread of COVID-19. A statement by the Nigeria Immigration Service Public Relations Officer, DCI Sunday James, indicates that the group of 10, two from Cross River and eight from Akwaibom states, we are arrested at the Eshet village at Dadia control post axis in Uruan local government area of Akwaibom State. The 10 were then profiled by the Nigeria Immigration Service and subsequently handed over to health officials for medical checks to ascertain their COVID-19 status before they were returned to their localities. And a suspect found with human skull and 181 others have been paraded by the Delta State Police Command for various criminal offenses during this period of COVID-19. Kelvin Ubechia witnessed the exercise in Asaba. We, however, warn that um, some of the pictures might not be pleasant. The Commission of Police Delta State Command, Hafiz Sinua, said the human skull was recovered from an illegal camp belonging to supporters of proscribed group in the country. Members of another group were also arrested for illegal possession of firearms. Delta State Police Command, in furtherance with its continuous efforts to provide residents of the state with adequate security, protect lives and property, and prevent breakdown of law and order, has arrested many terrorists struck armed robbery suspects. They are the train me for Ugumosu camp. Now we can 
barrel, one double barrel, two double barrel, and one single. So they say we have no right to carry go enter interstate. No, those two here, that is the only problem we made. So we're supposed to book. This set of suspects are being held for child trafficking involving two weeks old babies. I didn't steal, though. I didn't steal any baby. What did you do? They brought the baby to me and I gave it to a welfare officer for adoption. Mm. Then the woman now gave out the baby to this other woman for adoption and promised to bring back. 11 Islamic states of West Africa province fighters have surrendered to troops of Operation Lafia Dole in Adamawa State. The coordinator, Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, announced this at a periodic news conference in Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has the details. This number of surrendered BHTA aspire fighters is an indication of the heat of our operational activities on the terrorists due to the renewed impetus in the theater to end the criminality. The conference which held at the Defense Headquarters Abuja bring up to speed joint military and other security agencies operations. Within the last week, top recent success recorded in the ongoing Operation Lafia Dole is the killing of a total number of 61 terrorists, arrest of 22 criminal collaborators, and the rescue of 72 abducted people. And more terrorists are willing to surrender. One of such moves was the dropping up of 72 family members of BHG ISWAP members at the entrance of Ngala town in Ngala local government area of Borno State. This comprised of 33 women and 39 children. All of them are in the custody of troops for further action. Similarly, troops of Operation Wild Stroke in Benue State responded to a distress call and neutralized four assailants and recovered arms. The High Command is calling on parents to advise their wards and subjects not to succumb to inducements by the terrorists as the armed forces of Nigeria remains decisive to end the insurgency and other security challenges in the country. The defense headquarters knows that it has upscaled its operations across the country. Ismail Musa, NTA News. We now join Adiola in Lagos for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Adiola. Thank you, Foma. Protective kits and palliatives have been donated to Zone 2 Command of the Nigeria Police Force in Lagos. Imolia Yotokede reports that the gesture was part of initiatives by a non-governmental organization to support security operatives to stay safe. The Nigeria Police Force is the principal law enforcement and lead security agency in Nigeria. And the role of the force during the COVID-19 pandemic cannot be ignored. Hence, the resolve of a non-governmental organization to support officers and men of the force in Zone 2 Command headquarters in Lagos with safety kits and palliatives. We as a body, the PCLC, and led by my person, we now said we should go ahead and remember them right now. The police need us. We all need to come together to support them in the fight against coronavirus. Assistant Inspector General of Police, Zone 2 Command, Ahmed Ilyasu, commended the organization for the gesture and promised that the police command will not relent in the discharge of its duty. If the security agents, agencies are healthy and hearty, they will perform their duty perfectly. And these, 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 these palliatives, these materials are signifying that to make them effective to carry out and discharge their functions and duties. Items donated include hand sanitizers, face masks and food items. 30% of the items are expected to be given to the Police Community Relations Committee. PCRC in Lagos, Imolia Yotukide, NTA News. The world economy will not recover in a hurry when COVID-19 is finally out of the picture. Abolade Salami examines what is at stake at the way forward. The outbreak of coronavirus has adversely affected all sectors of the economy, and this phenomenon is not exclusive to Nigeria. The pandemic, which has stalled the global economy, 
has caused a drastic drop in the price of crude oil at the international markets, with factories cutting down production, while restrictions have been placed on imports and export of goods and services. With the downward slide in countries' gross domestic products and the lockdown across borders, the International Monetary Fund has predicted a global recession. This economic reality then pushed most governments of the world to come up with ideas of running a flexible economy in order to serve as a shock to the huge losses being recorded. So when we put all this together, we see a pandemic that has destabilized, dislocated most economies of the world, if not all, <clears throat> and Nigeria is not an exception. So we see a pandemic that is already pushing a bigger threat to the state of economic welfare of majority of Nigerians. We see a pandemic that is causing serious constraints to policy implementation, budget implementation, and therefore economic activities. Uh, although we did not envisage a situation like the COVID-19, but it is now providing room for a lot of people to evaluate this app and look at how to apply most of this app right into their conditions, you know, uh, be it business um, or whatever it is you need to do that will require some level of um, financial activities or transaction for you to consume it, you know. For now, scientists and government are explaining remedies while relentlessly searching for a vaccine to prevent COVID-19. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTN News. And that's a contribution from the Lagos Network Centre. Ifoma is back to you for more Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Adiola. Now, today is World Family Day to commemorate family values among other issues affecting the very important units of the society. The day is coming at a time the world is experiencing a serious pandemic with the gradual lifting of lockdown in the FCT. How parents and their children are coping is what our correspondent Cecil Legwele finds out in two different families in the FCT. Madubelo way here in the FCT, the end towards the Guarim Park axis, and you can see the roads are relatively scanty, except for a few vehicles cleared by security operatives and those on essential duties. But you know what? This is not my story. Now this is my focus. With the lockdown on, families are at home, children back from school. Now the big question is, what exactly do families do while at home? Well, I'm in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Oche, and I'm about to find out what exactly they do while at home. Okay. Don't worry, our own is original. Okay. So you just use it. Ah, oh. <laughs> Come in, please. is when I wake up in the morning, I start my exercise, then after the, by the time I will be coming back from my exercise, they are awake themselves. But the kids really, they are the most happiest people now because they have not, they have the opportunity of using their tablets, their playstations and all. But apart from that, of course, we have to continue learning. So what I have done is they still do their normal private lessons with their private teacher. So we have time for that between 11 and 2 p.m. So we use Zoom to do that. In the evening, we do family prayer. Then, of course, everybody is out in the field, in the compound here. Then we come back inside for dinner and, yeah. Oh, God, let them please find the cure for coronavirus. I want to go to school and see my friends again. <laughs> And this is another vicinity here within the FCT. The family I'll be going to see now are also observing the lockdown. What do they do when they are locked down at home? The come back once down before the the time will get something to manage yourself, eat in the evening, like this to sleep. Food now for inside room now will be seven for inside one room. If it nine do like this, rain come in the night. Would they stand or sit down for one corner like this before rain finish to come manage clean the place in the water they link before you lie down. Well, 
That's the story of another household. Observing the lockdown here in the FCT, tales of two different families, you may say. Well, the prayer for um, the lips of everybody is let's get over this um, coronavirus and then see how we can help each other and indeed make our homes and of course the nation a better place. In Abuja, Cecil Egbele, NTA News. Thank you very much, Cecil. And to enlighten us more on these years of observance of the International Day of the Family is Azuka Menkiti. She is an education specialist with UNICEF and she'll be joining us via the telephone. Hello, Azuka, and thank you for joining us on Nationwide. Thank you very much. Okay, now, um, Azuka, please share your thoughts on the importance of the family amid the coronavirus pandemic, especially here in Nigeria. Well, um, family has an important role in building a peaceful, healthy, and value-based society. Um, in 1994, when the United Nations proclaimed May 15th of every year as the International Day of Families, it was not by accident it was based on recognition on, on the fact that they needed to assert the importance that the international community attaches to families. This particular celebration of the International Day of Family provides an opportunity to promote awareness of issues relating to families and to increase the social, economic, and demographic processes affecting families. Very interestingly, this year, that um, we are celebrating 25 years since the celebration of the International Day of Families began. Mm. This year's celebration is coming in at the time of one of the most challenging global health and social crises. So, this year is a very special celebration because within the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the celebration of the families brings to sharp focus for everybody the importance of investing in social policies, protecting the most vulnerable individuals and families. It also brings out clearly that the family bears the brunt of every, every kind of crisis because the family shelters its members from harm. The family provides care for every member of the family. Now, within the COVID-19 pandemic situation, we have found the families providing shelter and providing schools for even out of school children. Children are out of school, so families at this time are expected to provide a learning environment for learning at home, which is very difficult. And at the same time, families are also expected to continue their work responsibilities of providing for the families. Okay. So clearly, within this situation for Nigeria, I think the pandemic is also bringing out so much lessons that families are beginning to take in. Families are beginning to see their roles as a collective responsibility for every member of the family, the father, the mother, the children, because within this pandemic, everybody has equal roles to play, apart from the roles, the extra roles of having to provide for families as parents. Even every member, even as little as a, little, as a, a, a one-year-old child, has a duty to protect the family. What, what am I trying to say? What it means is that both governments and everybody should begin to recognize the, the role of family in keeping a nation. Because okay. the members of, the, of society come from families. And if families are not able to educate their, their members on how to keep away from getting infected, how to ensure that they keep to the directives and instructions, that, that, that to, to see each member as having the same accountability and responsibility of protecting one another. Okay. So for me, um, within this uh, pandemic situation, the role of the family is coming up clearly to everybody, and that is the time that every individual, these policymakers or legislators, should begin to look at how do we how do we support families? Okay. To um, to support um, Azuka, please, uh, can you? You've said quite a lot about the family and the role it is playing in containing the spread of the coronavirus. But do you have any other advice to Nigerians on COVID 19? Well, the advice is clear for everybody that this is about life or death. It's a choice that we have to make. So, my advice. 
quite clearly each to everybody within the families to own the collective responsibility of protecting yourself because when you protect yourself, you have protected your family. You have okay. protected your family members. So Thank everybody you. should wear the face mask if you must go out. Please, please wear your face mask. It's not only about yourself. About your family members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Azuka Menkiti. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on Nationwide. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. You're watching Nationwide. We take another break. The news continues shortly. Do stay. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus, but we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. 25th February 2020, Nigeria. It is real. It is a nightmare. It is killing people all over the world. It is COVID-19. Compliance with the various states in Nigeria, the current measures will flatten the curves. Shutting down is not an act of wickedness, but an act to save lives. Stay home, stay safe. Observe social distance. Always put on a face mask while leaving your house. Make sure you are on a tricycle alone. Cars and buses cannot carry more than half their passengers. Always remember to wash your hands. Together, we will defeat COVID-19. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, Nigerian Film Corporation, powering possibilities. The number of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. The battle of testing, isolating, treating, and attending to the affected persons rests heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus, save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing. To the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner, we say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Thanks for staying tuned. 
Now, former liaison officer to the Second Republic President, Shehu Shagari Tanku Yakasei, has described the appointment of Professor Ibrahim Abola Gambari as Chief of Staff to the President as well deserving in view of the outstanding records of patriotism, competence, loyalty and commitment to duty the new Chief of Staff has. As statement, Tanku Yakasei said the new Chief of Staff to the President served the country in different capacities over the years as one of the most competent and respected Minister of External Affairs. Yakasai said as one of the longest serving diplomats for over 10 years of service, Nigerian ambassador and permanent representative in the United Nations, special Nigerian representative in the United Nations and two-time elected president of the Security Council testified competence and international standing in the discharge of his responsibilities. Tanko Yakasai recalled that as a one-time leader of the United Nations Special Committee on Peacekeeping Operations in different areas of conflict in the world, Professor Gambari led United Nations missions, including Special Committee Against Apartheid in South Africa, as well as peace missions to Burundi, Rwanda, and Mozambique. While serving as a delegate to the 2014 National Conference, Yakase explained further that delegates at the then conference witnessed skills to overcome crises at crucial moments on a number of occasions during the conference. And we now join Abdul Rahman in Sokoto for more reports from that zone. Good afternoon, Ifoma, and welcome to Sokoto. Sokoto state government has flagged up Ramadan package worth 258.8 million naira for orphans and other needy persons. Dr. Abdullahi reports that at the ceremony, disbursement of zakat collected by Zakat and Endowment Commission across 86 districts was flagged off by the state. The event was part of the effort by the Sokoto state government to show care and love to the orphans and the needy in the state, especially during Ramadan. Items distributed include bags of assorted grains, textile materials, and cash to the beneficiaries. In addition to the zakat and what I've collected from across the 86 districts in the state, the state government has also expanded the sum of over 258.8 million naira in the procurement of the Ramadan package to be shared among orphans and needy. The program is expected to benefit 1,082,000 beneficiaries across the state. In Sakwatu, Talhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. The Zamfara state government has flagged up the third phase of the special fumigation against COVID-19 and malaria across the 14 local government areas of the state. Sadia Abokar to now reports. The Zamfara state government recently engaged the services of a private company to carry out special fumigation against COVID-19 and malaria across all the 14 local government areas of the state. The Exercise, which is conducted in stages, covers markets, motor parks, religious places, major streets, industrial and residential areas in every nook and cranny of the state. As the second stage of the fumigation successfully came to an end, the Zamfara State Commission of Environment and Solid Minerals, Dr. Nura Isa Guso, flagged up the third stage of the exercise at Gadabu area in Guso Metropolis. The aim of this program is just in continuation to preventing uh, the spread of every disease, not only coronavirus, but we have a lot of things that are being uh, paddled all the time during this hot season. Dr. Nura Isa who solicited for the continued support and cooperation of all stakeholders for the success of the exercise, maintained that the safety of the fumigation personnel and that of the general public is guaranteed. Because the efficacy of the chemicals have been tested and they are all within the human threshold, that is, they can be allowed to be inhaled within certain limits. Village head of Gadabu and some other residents of the area commended the Zamfara state government for the wonderful initiative and assured of their cooperation at all times. In Guso, Sadia Abu Bakar Chino, NTA News. That's it from here. Back to Ifoma and Abuja for continuation of Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Abdul Rahman. 
Now, governments cannot do it alone. There is the need for more well-spirited individuals and organizations to support the efforts to cushion the effects of the lockdown on the less privileged. This was why a religious body was at Daikibu community in Jabit district, Abuja, to distribute some palliatives to the residents. Adebola Bruslin Sunday reports. Investigations show that most residents of Daikibu live on daily income. And this crop of people are mostly affected by the lockdown. After presenting the items to the district head, residents were educated on preventive measures as they collect their packages. The community head, Ishakula Mishi, said he never expected that his people will be remembered. We don't even have enough food at home. I'm grateful. I will cook this one today. Tomorrow I will cook the one that I have. Leadership of the church said the donation will not be a one-off. This pandemic did not know whether you are rich, you are poor, you are Christian, you are Muslim, or you are pagan. So many people, they are not able to go out to look for what to eat. Need to. But at least I know it will go a long way to complement what the federal government is doing. The lockdown is one of the measures employed by government to curtail and contain the dreaded coronavirus. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday. NTA News. Anambra State's Governor Willie Obiano says there is no cause to panic over the second case of COVID-19 recorded in the state as adequate arrangements have been made to contain the spread. The governor in a state broadcast also announced that aggressive case search and contact tracing in the 179 communities in the state is in progress. Idem Kalu has details. The patient is said to have sneaked back into Anambra State after a business trip to Kano on 6th of May 2020, despite all the security agencies at the boundaries. He is currently receiving medical attention in one of the protective care centers as his residence has been sealed off and aggressive contact tracing commenced to minimize the wave of community spread that may arise from the case. We have commenced aggressive case search in the 179 communities of Anambra State. Uh, this will help us wrap up the numbers in terms of the people being tested to ensure immediate containment of any possible outbreak. We are also hopeful that when our laboratories become fully operational, we shall be able to conduct another test. Governor Ubiano, who announced that two laboratories in the state will operate fully as COVID-19 testing centers in a week time, directed security agencies to stop all human and vehicular movement into the state from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. From now on, there will be no vehicular and human traffic into Anambra State from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. This includes essential goods and services. The governor, who commended those that have supported the state, urged the citizens to continue to adhere strictly to the safety guidelines of COVID-19 pandemic. From Aguleri, Ndem Kalo, NTN News. And to talk further on the second case of COVID-19 recorded in Anambra State, we have the State Commissioner for Information and Public Enlightenment. He is Don Adinuba. He's joining us via telephone from Oka. You are welcome on Nationwide, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, now can we have an update on the search and contact tracing ongoing in your state? Uh, thank you. We... The second case is in our protection center. I don't have to mention the very town or city which the center is. We have six of them scattered all over the states. And the bed capacity is 600. And do not forget that Anambra State is the first state to build what people normally call an isolation center that meets the WHO standards, the very best in Nigeria. He's been treated and uh, he's receiving, he's cooperating with us and he's responding to treatment. Okay, but how is the search and contact tracing going in the States? Well, it's been going on well, but we are going to get to a much higher 
year level, which will be actually faster. We are going to the stage of community search, going from community to community, from house to house, from street to streets, to find out if there are people with the symptoms. And even people with that, the symptoms can be checked. Uh, in the case of the second case, uh, second, uh, yeah, second case, um, the person does not exhibit any symptoms at all. Okay, now. Somebody who lives in an state, he may not be an indigenous who traveled to Kano and contracted it. Okay. Now tell us what other measures are in place to contain the spread of the virus in Anambra State? Well, we have 326 wards in Anambra State. Each of these wards now has a committee comprised of the councillor and some other people who move from house to house. We have cascaded our passports from the states to each of the 21 local government areas. And from the 21 local government areas, we are going to each of the 326 wards. So we are getting to the grassroots. I do not think any state has got to this extent in what we are doing. Okay. And don't forget that uh, the campaign against the coronavirus was begun in January in a number of states. So we began far ahead of any government, federal or states. And that is why our um, record, our scorecard has been very, very impressive. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Don Adinuba, Commissioner for Information and Public Enlightenment. Thanks for joining us on Nationwide. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, now as the war against the global pandemic COVID-19 rages on, guests on Good Morning Nigeria have cited communication gaps in awareness level at the rural level of society, which they say is largely responsible for the nonchalancy displayed by some individuals despite the rising cases of coronavirus daily. The guests were speaking on COVID-19 and stepping up awareness. Daniel Aderi tells us more. While citing the risks that should emanate from not circulating messages to targeted audiences, guests on Good Morning Nigeria noted that there is need to improve community communication structure that targets the rural dwellers and the content approach of coronavirus messages. I think there is need now for effective utilization of the community-based structures to communicate in the rural areas. Because if you don't do that and they associate with situations, it will be difficult for people to believe the numbers that we hear every day. Our local government information structures are completely inefficient or completely not operating at all. And where they are operating, you can be sure that they only operate as protocol officers to the chairman. Because the normal things that they used to do in the past, they can no longer do them. Citing that much effort has so far been put into dissemination of information and also education of the public at all levels of society about coronavirus. Challenges in access to communication facilities and funds that aid in communication process were noted as some of the bottlenecks encountered in the process of awareness creation. Those facilities are not there. They are, they are most certainly uh, not there in majority uh, of the states. And these facilities are extremely important to achieve uh, sensitization at the rural level. We need to take another look at our investment nationally in risk communication. Nigeria State Federation needs the interdependence of states and of course the coordinating uh, federal government to ensure that all the programs and uh, the, the activities are taken down through the rural communities, you know, centrally. The guests, however, advise that COVID-19 messages be translated and transmitted in local dialects and languages for effective communication and education. In Abuja, Daniel Adirie, NT News. And in Benin, Agatha is ready with more reports on Nationwide. Former, a warm welcome to Benin. 
20 more coronavirus patients have been discharged, having tested negative twice and cleared from the various isolation centers across Edo State. Now, this brings total number of discharged patients to 34. Good luck in nine reports. 17 of the patients were discharged from the Stella Basenjo Hospital Isolation Center, one from the University of Benin Teaching Hospital, and two from the Irwa Specialist Teaching Hospital. Since we started seeing the COVID cases, we have had over 36, 38 patients admitted here. Of course, you know, half of them, more than half have been discharged. We have had no mortalities. That is, nobody has died here. The simple reason is because you, they come in different phases, mild, moderate, severe symptoms. So if you are able to catch them early and follow them up appropriately, you will get results. So far, the state has recorded 89 confirmed cases and 5 deaths. We also have uh, two patients being worked up for discharge today. Um, once we just have one negative uh, test, of course this is just opposed with the clinical picture the state of stability of our patient and then we take the decision to discharge them home and the follow-up always uh, continues even when they are discharged. The state government is urging citizens to comply with all laid down directives in order to effectively check the spread of the virus. In Benin, good luck in any NT News. Now, two weeks after a federal tertiary institution in Edo State developed a manual hand washing machine, the University of Benin has come up with an automated hand washing machine from its COVID-19 initiative team. It is to help contain spread of coronavirus. Obayutu Babrasai has details. The idea behind the automated hand washing machine is to ensure that while adhering to the hand washing directive, there is no contact between the user's hands and the machine, as demonstrated by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lilian Salami. Yeah, we go. The Vice Chancellor asked the institution's COVID 19 initiative team to involve the students in their research. This also doesn't need to depend on availability of electricity. This can be operated by the, you know, batteries. So it's innovative, it's unique in its sense, and we're very proud that it's coming from the University of Benin. The team leader, Professor Kassintin Obayagbo, says the machine is time efficient as the whole process of washing, rinsing, and drying takes just one minute. From this stage to commercialize it and make it available to very many athletes. About two weeks ago, the University of Benin COVID-19 initiative team came up with a ventilator that works for up to two hours without electricity supply. In Benin, Obehi Otoba Prasai, NT News. And that concludes our package. Nationwide continues right after this break. To stay tuned. I'm Taiwo and I'm Kenya. We live here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, we have lived here for 15 years. Yeah, and we're, uh, we're, we're here to dedicate this video to my cousin. My dear, dear cousin who lost his life. Day to coronavirus, his name was Papa Femi, Adebayo Lord Femi. He was a good guy and he was in the, left behind yeah, his wife and two and little kids. Two children. He, he was in the ventilator for 12 days and he died. Anyways, we are here. To alert everybody, both in Nigeria and in diaspora, to please stay safe. It's not enough to say stay safe. Maintain, maintain the social distancing because it's easy to just get into the routine and say that that other person also had coronavirus. If I get it, I'm young and strong and I'll be fine. But it's not about us being just young and strong. You know, here in Brazil, we, we blamed the president, blamed everybody, but the responsibility still lies on us. Please, if please. you can, if you have to go outside, maintain your social, maintain the social distancing. Wash your hands all the time. Use, use your use your face mask. Use gloves if you can. And once you come inside, you get returned home. Just try as much as possible to affect yourself at all times because it's real it's, it's real. real people don't have to die before we value yeah, life yeah so we don't please. have to also lose our loved ones yes. if we can tell everybody if we can inform anybody inform everybody you know to please stay safe stay, safe, stay at we home. don't have to die my, my cousin is gone now I, I, I wish i could bring him back I, I, i'm inconsolable my heart is broken but please if you can stay safe, stay safe. Please. please remain at home if you can A strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19. A corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build 
your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number. 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. Welcome there. Have you washed your hands? I'm inside my house again. This is not the key black man. Ah! I don't know if it's misinformation or poor hygiene that will kill you first. Coronavirus is real and good hygiene practice will save your life. Oh. Anyway, no hand washing, no eating. I will not take care of it. That's what I is real and it's on the rise but you can help yourself and help others to be safe remember we can stop the spread it's in your hands this message is from the Akin Fadeli Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation Nigerians let us take responsibility stay healthy stay safe and curb the spread of the virus take responsibility the coronavirus spreads from one person to another let us avoid crowd gathering of any kind for any reason, take responsibility. Avoid traveling from one state to another during these lockdown restrictions. Obey all the rules that are put in place. Take responsibility. Stop spreading fake news and unverified reports about the coronavirus. There is no known cure for COVID-19. Take responsibility. Observe all the measures that can help stop the spread of the virus. Together, we can do this but only if we take responsibility. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. You're watching Nationwide on the NTA. It's now time to go to Kaduna and Suleiman is there for more on Nationwide. Thank you very much, Ifoma, and welcome to Kaduna. Worried by the rising cases of coronavirus pandemic, Jigao State Task Force on COVID-19 is rolling out new strategies to contain and control the spread of the dreaded virus. The State Commissioner for Health and Chairman Task Force on COVID-19 Dr. Abba Umar Zakar dropped the hint at Fanisau Isolation Facility in Jigawa State. Awal Muhammad has the details. Jigawa State currently has 169 cases of COVID-19. Out of the 51 new cases recorded, 28 are from the Almajray repatriated from Kano, while 23 are from contact tracing of the 20. Three new cases, 14 are from Dusi, four Brunungkudu, two each in Rengim and Guaram, and one in Taura local government area now under lockdown. The good thing is out of these uh, 124, uh, about 77 are our patients that are recovering, that they don't have any symptoms. So we've, we just took their samples to see whether they have zero converted. If they have zero converted, we will witness some massive uh, discharge uh, of our patients uh, uh, in the coming weeks. The tax force chairman explained that the committee has received one ambulance and two are being awaited as part of measures to effectively respond to the pandemic in the state. We finished the processes for the molecular laboratory that we are going to establish to start uh, COVID-19 testing uh, in the states, and the equipment are on their way. And like I've told you, this lab will be established uh, in Dusa General Hospital. Jigawa State recorded its index case in Kazauri local government area early last month. From Dusa, Awal Muhammad Kazauri, NTA News. Commandant Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Kaduna State Command, Babangida Abdullah Duzimba, is continuing his visit to boundary communities of the state as part of efforts to enforce strict compliance with the interstate travel ban aimed at containing the spread of cor coronavirus pandemic. Ahmad Omar Kudan reports. 
In spite of the ban on interstate travel to prevent the spread of coronavirus across the country, the level of violation of the order among some motorists and passengers is still high, a trend that the Kaduna State Government in collaboration with security agencies are striving hard to check. This, according to the authorities, is more disturbing as most of the people who tested positive for the virus in Kaduna State have trouble history. State Commandant Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps was at Tashangango in Ikaro local government area, a boundary town with neighboring Kano State, where he expressed satisfaction with the collaboration among security agencies to enforce interstate boundary closure. In company of some of the officials of the state government, the team was also at boundary communities of Makarapi and Kodo local government areas for the enforcement of the interstate travel ban. In Kaduna, Ahmad Umar Kudang, NT News. And with that report, Ifuma will continue with Nationwide. Thank you very much, Suleiman. Now, with the steady successes in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic, Gombe State Governor Mohamedou Inoua Yahaya has relaxed some of the measures put in place to prevent the spread of the virus. Correspondent Emmanuel Akila reports that the governor made the announcement in a statewide broadcast. The number of confirmed COVID-19 positive individuals in Gombe State rose to 124 as at 11 a.m. on Friday, the 15th of May, 2020. However, with the containment measures put in place, 87 people have recovered and discharged, leaving 36 in treatment centers with one death. With this development, the state government begins a gradual easing of the restrictions. Following the persistent calls for government to reopen worship centers for congregational prayers, we held consultative meetings with religious leaders and heads of security agencies in the state. It is against this backdrop that government resolved to gradually ease the restrictions in our dear state by reopening places of worship, but with strict adherence and compliance to the following guidelines. One, strict observance of social distancing. We are also adjusting the curfew time in order to conform with the national order as prescribed by Mr. President. There are also plans to cushion the impact of the containment measures in the state. The state government is not relenting in the battle against the killer coronavirus as the state is being disinfected. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTA News. And that concludes Nationwide for today. We thank you so much for watching. Please remember to stay safe.